It's now the end of May and I wanted to do a separate video all about my wedding flowers as part of the wedding flower series so that you can see how things are growing. We'll talk a little bit about the challenges I've been facing. I've also got a lot of planting out to do of the wedding flowers today, so come join me. So this is how the plot is looking at the very end of May and I've got quite a bit of plants to go out today and you probably will see this in the separate May allotment tour looking a little bit different um, but let's head up into the tunnel first and see what's still in there seedling wise. It is such a gorgeous day today I'm here quite early it's about 10 o'clock in the morning and I wanted to get here and do some jobs before it gets too hot later on. So inside the tunnel it's still a jungle of plants and I can't wait to get these out into the ground now. Today we're going to be planting out these which is the status. It's not one I've grown before but I found it really easy to grow, very easy to germinate and this is the one that dries really well but you can also use it fresh and it creates like an arch of little tiny flowers that's going to be great as like a little filler in bouquets and arrangements. I've got two colours here, I've got white and I can't remember the actual name but it's like a peachy salmon colour. Over at the back I've got some white scabious looking a little bit yellow. I think I may have overwatered them a little bit because they don't like to have wet feet. They are quite dry loving. Um, there's only a few of those. I had a few bit of trouble with some germination on certain seeds this year. Yeah, particular seeds that I've had trouble germinating are my straw flowers. I had to buy a couple of different packets because the white ones didn't germinate and then also the orange ones didn't germinate and straw flowers are one that you have to get fresh seed every year because they just don't store very well so I think that was the issue but I did speak to one of the suppliers and they very kindly um, gave me a new packet which was very good of them fantastic service children's so um, yeah that sort of set me back a little bit which is why these little seedlings are so tiny so on the left side we've got straw flower salmon color and then on this side we've got the orange ones and they're just so far behind all the others that I've already planted some out. Um, so these won't be going out for a while, but I'm pretty certain they're still going to be absolutely fine uh, and they'll be ready in time and you get so many flowers from them. So I have, I have hope. We're going to ignore all the veggies today. If you want to see that, check out my May plot tour. But here we've got another one that's going out today. This is my amaranth and also the auric. I haven't grown auric before. I've grown amaranth once or twice, but not really um, devoting much care or attention to it. It just happened to be in some seeds that I either threw on the floor, um, but I haven't grown it in quite a while. So I'll be planting these out. I'll be pinching them out. And also um, I might cover them because it's going to be a bit cold in the next few nights. And then we've got the dahlias. Look at them all coming up now, really thick and fast quite a few there isn't there <laughs> there's actually a few more behind me as well I think when I counted there's about 45 I think dahlias and yes I do have room for them all I have planned this out so I'm feeling quite good about that um, they won't be going out for another couple of weeks yet but let's have a close look at some of the varieties and see how they're doing because this is the time when you've just got to remember to be patient because some of them are a lot slower than others Honestly, it's like a dahlia jungle. So one that I'm particularly looking forward to is this, which is Cornel uh, Bronze, which is the ball type dahlia. Um, do check out my separate dahlia um, choices video if you've not seen that, if you want to see what all these will actually look like. <laughs> but yes, they're growing really, really well. Look at those shoots. It's this time of the year now when you've got to be careful with your watering because they're going to need more water than they did before but also if I was to slosh the hose around you've got to be careful because some of them are literally only just appearing this one's much further behind so it might not need as much water Ludwig Hercules Ludwig oh Helfert that's right can't remember what that one looks like now <laughs> uh, some of them are getting quite tall and they're almost ready for pinching out which is a process I will be doing because you get more flowers, a stockier, bushier plant that's less prone to sort of wind damage. 
Um, I've got a separate video on pinching out if you want to see that. Um, so yes, I'll be pinching it out soon, basically chopping it back to a there, giving it a good haircut. <laughs> it's quite a scary thing to do if you've done it for the first time. But look, I can you can see here one I did earlier, chopped that huge stem out and I've already got those two side shoots coming out and it's going to give me so many flowers. La Recoleta, I remember that's a nice purple one, but look, all those roots coming out of the bottom. Yeah, maybe I will be planting these out soon. But I'm really pleased, they've all, all come up really well so far. Some of them I did start a bit later than others, like this one. So this is the Zunder Mystery Fox from my own tubers that I planted later. And it's got a little shoot there, look, and another little eye above it is just sprouting. So it'll catch up, I'm not at all worried. One of my favourites, that one. But yes, they're doing really, really well. Just got to be careful at the moment with, oh look, got another one. See that one's not even sprouted yet, but it's getting there. Just be careful on the watering, remember, and be patient. <laughs> One of the main challenges with my dahlias in here at the minute has just been the temperature fluctuations. It's been a real challenge because in the daytime, outside temperatures are reaching 20 degrees now, quite regularly, which means the tunnel is reaching about 30. One day I left my tunnel door closed and it reached 50 degrees, which meant I lost a few of my seedlings. It was the aster, China aster seedlings I lost. So I've sown some new ones, they might catch up. I'll show you them in a minute. But the dahlias, I mean, they do like hot temperatures, but just gotta be careful. So I did actually have some fleece on hand to drape over the top, just to create a little bit of shade because all that new foliage, I didn't want it to singe. And on some of them, uh, it did actually get burnt when I didn't do it. Look, you see this one here, it's not so bad now. It's grown quite a bit since, but it had a little bit of brown singeing from the heat. Uh, so it did suffer. So you can see up here, I've got this fleece and it wasn't touching the foliage at all. And I literally just draped it from there to the other side over there and tucked it in to give these a little bit of shade. And the other challenge has been the nighttime temperatures because although it's reaching 20 in the day, we're still getting six degrees at night in the middle of May, which is quite unusual. It's quite cold. And that could be what's resulting in a little bit of yellowing on some of the leaves. The yellowing is usually either due to a couple of things, overwatering, a lack of nutrients or cold temperatures. So this one here, you can see it's quite limey compared to another one. So it, I, I think it's due to the cold, but I may give these a very diluted seaweed feed soon just to keep them ticking over because I won't be getting them in the ground for at least another week because I've got too much to do. <laughs> if I carry on a bit further we've got these are the Rebecca's and I started with probably about 20 seedlings and I've lost a few. I haven't grown them before so it's been quite a challenge. They don't like to be too wet. Um, I think getting the compost mix right was quite important for these and I didn't realize just how slow growing they are I mean oh my gosh I feel like they've been sat like this for weeks <laughs> but you can see there are some tiny new little leaves coming and so it won't be I won't be planting these out for a while but it does mean that I can clear um, one of the crops that I've got out there for these although they're not going to take up that much room because <laughs> there's not many of them but it's fine it's not a key flower in the plan and what have we got here ah oh, so this is my second sowing of straw flowers because i was having trouble with the germination so these are the salmon and orange were there i've already pricked out what i need these are all spares now so gonna find somebody that might want those down here got tomatoes you're not included today um oh yes i've got some little calendula and a lot of these I've actually planted out in my courtyard garden at home. It's all very paved, but there are some areas where I tend to just stick um, plants for people to enjoy the view from their balconies and from the window. And calendula quite often get powdery mildew towards the end of summer. So I've decided to keep them away from my plot 
because I don't want my squash or anything else to get powdery mildew. So these are all going to be grown at home. And the varieties that I have are called Art Shade Mix. And there's another one I need to look up the name of, but it's like a dusky orange color. And going a little bit further down towards the end, what have we got? Oh yes, yeah, so these are the China Asters. Little tiny specks, look. Yeah, ah, oh, it's really sad. <laughs> so I did sow them sort of like the middle of April, ready to plant them out towards the end of May, June. And I pricked them out, I grew them on into bigger trays and they reached a, you know, a nice size, nothing too big. But it was that day that the first hot day of spring came. I didn't have the tunnel door open. I just transplanted them. Maybe didn't give them enough water to settle them in and they perished. <laughs> they got completely frazzled in the sun because the tunnel reached like 50 degrees. So mm, yeah, that was one of the losses. I haven't had too many losses so far, touch wood. <laughs> so um, I just started some more. Uh, I planted these seeds it was probably the middle of uh, May, so a little bit late, but I don't think it's too late. I know that if you start planting them from June, um, you may run the risk of not getting flowers. Um, so we'll see, but I thought it was worth a shot. It's, you know, still plenty of time. So yeah, that's the seedling tray that I pricked them out from. Two varieties in there. Um, the white ones didn't germinate very well at all, although it looks like one has just there. Um, but otherwise I've got um, king size apricot and coral beauty, coral something. Oh yes, and then we come on to some of the <laughs> ornamental grasses, <laughs> which I had a, a little moment with. Um, yes, yeah, so there's the china asters I've pricked out. Let me just tell you about the grasses for a minute. <laughs> I've come outside because it's a little bit cooler here. So yeah, ornamental grasses. Most years I will grow the variety called Panicum elegans frosted explosion because it's beautiful and airy and delicate and it fills out your bouquets really well. I love it mixed with straw flowers and the dahlias. It's gorgeous. And I thought I'd bought it. Uh, and it turns out I bought Agro Agrostis nebulosa fibrotic grass and I sowed it and then I've been growing it and I thought this doesn't really look like the panicum I usually grow and then I had a panic and I thought what have I bought I don't remember and they look very similar online essentially they are the same thing they've just got two names an old name and a newer name so I did buy the right thing, but I panicked and I bought more seed of the Panicum, I think it's called Sparkler, which is what those are. But I might not need them after all because I've already got loads of them down here, which I'll show you. Um, yes, it is annoying when plants keep changing their name. So I do have the correct grass, but I sowed them on a tray and it was really thickly, densely sown and they all came up so i haven't really thinned the plants very well i've been a bit lazy on that front but let me show you the plug plants because they are so healthy and happy i've already planted some of them out but this is them i planted them in these lovely deep cell trays but look how happy and healthy they are i've just got quite a lot of seeds per cell i haven't thinned them out very much at all but i'm sure they'll still you know flower and do their little seedy thing um, quite well and they're only just starting to look like the plant that I recognize as panicum so yeah that was just a little silly panic that I had but uh, I've got plenty of ornamental grasses so not at all worried about that anymore so why don't we go on a quick wedding flower tour of what's planted out already on the allotment and we're going to add more to it so apologies if you've already seen some of this on the may tour but i know some of you might dib in for certain videos and not watch others so i may be repeating myself but i'm sure you'll enjoy it anyway um, but yes also these foxgloves can we just have a little moment with these of course these are not going to be flowering for the wedding but 
Oh my gosh. If I had a spring wedding right now, look at them all. <laughs> I can see all the bees going about them. Anyway, moving on. So we've got lots of alliums starting to appear and these are going to make fantastic seed heads if I'm making any big arrangements and my grandma roses. Um, I might actually be saving some of the petals to dry for confetti. I think that's such a lovely way of making your own natural um, confetti. So basically any flowers that start to go over, I'm going to start drying. Um, but obviously not the foxgloves because they're poisonous. We don't really want people touching them and then potentially touching their mouths. Um, so yes, what do we have? Let's go down because in this section here, this is where I'm going to have lots of squash. Uh, I might have them growing up the archways, but look at these alliums. These are the Allium shibertii. And I've never grown them before, but aren't they absolutely incredible? The way that they just sort of create this firework explosion from the center and then come out almost like 30 centimeters across. I think they're absolutely incredible. I don't know how I'm gonna use them uh, because they're so big, but you know, just plonked in a vase or I don't know what, but these are just absolutely amazing. So yes, these will be used dried, so they won't have much color come October, but they'll have that intense drama. And all the bees have been all over these. I'm just so pleased with how well they've done. I did lose one. I think something came along and sat on it when it was growing, <clears throat> excuse me. So I do have one little gap. I think it was like a fox or something. Uh, but in front, we've got the Allium Christophii which are just appearing and these are a much larger round sort of well it's another allium <laughs> i'm sure we'll find one that's in bloom further down so i'll be able to interplant these with my squash and then harvest the flower heads for drying uh, and make most of the space and just next to them in my strawberry cage <laughs> i had a self-seeded honesty plant and look at all those seeds inside the little seed heads. So I'll be saving these again for drying, but I don't have that many yet. And it's been a strange year for honesty. So at home in the courtyard, I planted out a lot of the self seeded plants of honesty and also ones that I'd sown intentionally last year so that they flew, flow, flow, <laughs> so that they flowered this spring. And I've got loads and loads of big lush leaves, but they're not yet flowering and I don't know if it's because I sowed them too late. I'm pretty sure I didn't because they self-sow anyway and produce flowers prolifically. I think it's because we've had quite a cold spring and a lot of things are quite late. In fact, I can show you just behind here. Here's some others that self-seeded and I'd usually expect these to be flowering around the end of April into May. And I've got loads of leaves, but no flower stems yet. So. I'm not sure if they're going to flower or not. I mean, I thought they'd still catch up, so we may get June honesty. We will have to see on that one, but I've still got plenty of um, seed heads saved from last year as well at home anyway. Down in the wildlife corner, I don't think there's any plants down here that I'm using for the wedding because this is all natural and just sort of left for its own devices. But I do have a few alliums that you can see here and there and that I will be harvesting if I need it for the seed heads. At the bottom of the plot, again, here's another example of the honesty that I would expect to be flowering by now. And it's not. So uh, anybody else experiencing this? I would love to know. And next to the shed, we've got a nice empty bed that's just been prepped. And that's where the amaranth is going to go with the auric because I can easily put some supports in to stop it from blowing in the wind because they do get quite big. Um, yeah, so that was where I'll be planting some out later. Then in the main beds, this is where the dahlias will be going very soon. Up here is where the straw flowers are going. You can see I've already planted out half of the bed. I'm going to add the others shortly. So these are the white ones. 
some of the peach and a blackberry coloured one as well. Looking really happy, yeah, they've settled in. They've only been in the ground for probably two or three days now, but they're looking good. I've also had a bit of a tough time with my zinnias and my drumsticks, Gabius. They both like it hot and dry and they don't like to get root bound. And I think I definitely left the zinnias a bit long and they got a bit root bound. Hopefully that's not gonna affect their flowering, but it can make them or prevent them from making multiple flowers per plant. And it might just produce one flower per plant, but I'm hoping they'll be okay. And the drumstick scabious, well, let me show you them. These are the zinnias and I've planted them out a little bit early when we're still getting these quite cold nights, which took us by surprise. They're actually starting to look a lot better and you can see the new growth in the middle. I may be pinching these out quite soon to encourage more branching. Um, but yes, I think it's just a combination of being pot bound and then going out and then having a few cold nights that's made them look a little bit yellow and struggle. But that's nothing compared to <laughs> the drumstick scabious. Poor little things. I'm I'm not quite sure what happened with these, but they were struggling when I had them in the cell trays. So I think it could be a, a, a bit of a case of not getting their roots down enough, potentially drying out. Uh, I'm not too sure, but they really don't look happy, do they? So I'll give them a little bit longer. Some of them might come through. I don't need that many anyway. So what I might just do is interplant it with plants that will do well. So I'm not wasting the space. We'll see, they might improve. But we do have some plants that are in the ground. They've been in the ground for quite a while and they're looking really good. Let me show you. In front of the polytunnel, we've got three different plants here, but this is the nigella. And look, we've got flower buds that are literally about to burst open any minute. <laughs> this is a white flowering one but I'm growing it mainly for the seed head because they create these beautiful seed heads. And if my drumstick scabious don't um, produce the ones that look terrible behind me, then at least I'll have plenty of these seed heads as a, as a backup. So, I mean, each plant, I, they're not particularly tall, probably about uh, just over a foot in height, but we've got lots of side branches for even more flowers. And I planted these out, I can't remember now. It must have been very early spring, I think. But yeah, they're looking great. Next to it is another ornamental grass, uh, quaking grass. So these little seed heads, I'm gonna dry. And they make these lovely little fish shapes. They're still a little bit young. They will get longer. Breeza maxima is its botanical name and they're all producing their little seed heads now and they look so lovely in the wind look <laughs> and next to them we've got the cosmos that i was a little bit impatient with because i didn't have any room to pop them up into the tunnel so i thought well, that's it you're going out <laughs> so i've got a couple of rows of white ones and i've also got the new apri apricotta from chilton's and they're really starting to bulk out now and put on lots of lovely new growth. I will be pinching these out uh, once they get a little bit bigger. I want them to thicken out and produce a bit more foliage first. So I'm not going to be zapping too much energy. But that one there is a lovely plant. And yes, I don't want to be pinching them too low either. So um, yeah, I'm really pleased with these. We will have to get some supports in because I don't want them to flop around. So that is where we're at so far at the end of May with my wedding flowers, which is uh, not that long away now. It's a very early autumn wedding. Ooh, yeah, it's coming around quick. The planning is going okay, but I've got to get some plants in the ground now. And I want to get them in because it's just a game of chasing my tail right now with the watering and, you know, they're drying out so quickly in the tunnel. I just want to get them in the ground so they're much easier to look after after and I don't have to get so stressed about it. So let's do a little bit of planting out now. Um, not sure what we should start with. I'm thinking maybe the amaranth. Let's go for that one. 
time to go outside. You'll have to excuse all of the clutter over there. That's my messy corner. And I mean, everybody has one, but this is where the auric and the amaranth are gonna go. And they both need full sun to thrive. And although this area does get quite shaded in the winter because of the trees and my shed, in the summertime, when the sun is much higher in the sky, it does get a lot of sunshine. So they're gonna go here. And also it's where they're best protected against the wind because our prevailing southwesterly wind will come from this direction. And I've got a lot of hedging over there and trees that will take the brunt of the wind. So I don't want these big plants to be thrown around in the wind. But also I've chosen to put them here because this is a raised bed and I've only got two or three of these on the plot. It's not something I do a lot of, but it means I can easily put a wooden support uh, structure in place to uh, prevent the wind from blowing them around. So we'll be making a framework to attach to this uh, in a couple of weeks time. But first I just want to get the plants in. And the thing with amaranth is that they can get absolutely enormous if you don't pinch them out. And you might want that if you're gonna create like a huge urn full of massive flowers. Um, these create huge tassels that can trail down or some of them also go upright. Um, but I will be pinching mine out. I've not yet done it, uh, but first I'll get them in the ground and that'll produce more manageable uh, stems. So I've got a few varieties. We've got the green one here at the front. This one's called Hot Biscuits and it creates a really biscuity coloured um, tassel that hangs down. So nice sort of soft um, brownish kind of colour. And then I've got another one. This red one here is called uh, Velvet. And I can't remember if this one's an upright one, but I believe it is. And then I've got a green and then the Auric is a tricolour. So you get a mixture in those. And this bed I've already, I've weeded, well, somewhat <laughs> and uh, watered it quite well over the last couple of days because I want them to have a nice soft damp ground to uh, root into and you can see from this little plug we've got really good roots already and these are ready to be planted out. Now how far apart do we plant our amaranth? Now if you're going to be pinching them out you can plant them a little bit closer and if you don't want to pinch them out and you want enormous plants, you need to obviously space them a little bit further apart. But I'm going to be planting mine at about uh, 20, 22, 25 centimetres apart. And I know that the length of my Hori Hori knife from the tip here to this section here, where there's a little metal rivet thing, uh, that's 22 centimetres. So about the entire width of this would be about 25, 30 centimetres. So it's handy to have a tool that you know the measurements of because then you don't have to use a ruler or anything when you're planting them out. So I'm going to plant this one down here in the corner using my Hori Hori. And I'm going to plant it quite deep actually. Keep it nice and sturdy. And they do like well-drained soil and my soil is going to be absolutely fine for these guys. And yes, then I'm just going to use my Hori Hori from the tip there to that little rivet. So that's where my second one is going to go. So it looks like I'm going to be planting three plants per width on this. So we'll go with three hot biscuits at the back. Now as for the pinching out, I'll probably do this actually as I go along but I'll just show you on a close up how I'll be doing it. So this is the entire plant and I'm literally just gonna take my finger and my thumb and you see that growing tip there in the center? I'm just going to nip that out like that. And then we'll have lots of side branches appear probably in about a week. I didn't have quite enough room for all of the auric to go into that bed with the amaranth, but because they're gonna get quite tall, I think I'm gonna plant some here where they get full sun, 
the alliums will soon be cut back anyway and this is going to be my squash bed and I'm hoping that by the time I plant out my squash the amaranth would have already sorry the auric would have gained quite a bit of height already so they don't get too swamped by the, all that foliage of the squash and a lot of the squash are going to go on arches anyway so I'm just going to give it a go plant some of my spares here right at the back uh, because you know they're going to get quite tall and yeah I'm uh, excited to see how they do here so we'll have one arch there one in the middle and then one here so I'm thinking if I put a few auric down here see how they do eh? I do like experimenting and mixing up uh, you know planting combinations because you discover new things I uh, have been warned that these do <coughs> self-seed like crazy so you may find that wherever you plant them if you don't harvest them before they seed you might have them come back uh, in future years in many numbers so be warned <laughs> uh, must give them a good water straight away get them settled in and I have kept some of the leftovers in the polytunnel as backups just in case god forbid anything happens to these if a pigeon comes along and decides to eat them all although i don't think pigeons like amaranth but you never know it's always good to have backups so now i'm going to be planting out the status and these are going to go next to my rather sad looking drumstick scabious and if some of these die off, then I'll just fill the gaps with more status because I've got uh, another set of them over there, which I won't be planting yet today. But these are a really nice size now. And we've got lots of roots down there at the bottom. So these are gonna go in. Uh, a spacing of about 25 to 30 centimeters apart. We won't be pinching these out. And 25 centimetres to 30 centimetres is about the entire length of my hori hori. So that's how I'll be uh, using that to space them. But I might actually go get my stick because this is quite a long bed and I do like to have straight lines. Yeah, this piece of wood is nice and straight and I just plant along the edge and that's how you get a nice straight line. And although I'm not very formal in my garden design, the benefit of having straight lines is that you can run your hoe in between all of your plants to get rid of the weeds um, which you can't do if you plant them uh, dotted all over the place so yes we'll be getting these in now i'm a little bit worried about this dry weather that we're having and it's following a very similar pattern to 2020 when we had a really really hot summer that started around the end of may and the beginning of june uh, so for that reason i'm making sure that my planting holes are um, nice and loose so I'm giving it a really good fork with my hori hori and then also you know I'm planting certain things a little bit deeper than usual like the amaranth so that their roots are going to get down and hopefully they'll get settled and not have as much trouble as if if I were to plant them later in the season so yeah some of these have gone out a little bit earlier than normal so this half will be salmon and that half will be white um, is that they'll grow a bit more evenly because if I was to have one color at this side and one color at the back the back side could get more shaded because the way the sun moves and the hedge creating the shadow so um, by doing it this way both sections will get even amount of sunlight across the border hopefully so well that's the plan I've never grown status and I'm so looking forward to harvesting from it. It's one that you can again dry the flowers. Now this section here is where I'm going to be sowing some more of my straw flowers. Uh, we're going to put in the salmon in this top section where I'm sat. The bottom section will be for the orange ones that are still growing. They're going to be a lot further behind than the others so I just need to get this patch ready, uh, remove some of the weeds and some of the potted plants that uh, I need to make the space for. Now I'm planting my straw flowers 
at 22 centimeters apart. And again, I'm gonna try and use my line as a guide and my hori hori as well, up to the second little rivet. I'm gonna measure it up there and measure it down there as well. And I just really hope that my orange ones soon catch up with all the others because they're teeny tiny still. Oh, it feels so good to get quite a lot of the plants now in the ground and it's going to be a lot less stress trying to keep them all watered inside the polytunnel. So that's it for my wedding flower update. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. Uh, next time on the wedding flower series, I will be planting out the dahlias, which will only be in a couple of weeks time. So I'm really excited for that. Um, yeah, got to find room for them all, but I think we've got enough space. I'm pretty sure we've got enough space. <laughs> so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.